Hello and welcome to Patriot Stadium on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. I'm Nick Appalucho here alongside my co-partner Alex Green. Today we're going to see the Wayne Hills Patriots take on the Westwood Cardinals in a game of field hockey. How you doing today, Alex? I'm doing pretty well today, Nick. It's my first time on the mic and I'm pretty eager to get started. I'm excited to go with you on your first time too. My first game last year was actually a field hockey game, so I'm a little used to it. So, you know Wayne Hills has had this turf for a couple years now, so do you think it'll be an advantage or disadvantage for them, and how do you think it's going to play out for the Westwood Cardinals? Well, I certainly think Wayne Hills has the advantage. They're very used to this turf. They... Damn it. Hello and welcome to Patriot Stadium on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. I'm Nick Appalucho here alongside Alex Green. Today we're going to see the Wayne Hills Patriots take on the Westwood Cardinals in a game of field hockey. How are you doing today, Alex? Doing pretty well today, Nick. It's my first field hockey game and my first time out on the mic, actually, and I'm pretty eager to get started. Same with me, Alex. Same with me. Last year I did my first game as a field hockey game. I couldn't say that it turned out to be a good production, but I know you're going to do better than I did. So, you know Wayne has had this turf for a few years now. So how do you think it's going to play out for them? Is it going to be an advantage or a disadvantage? And what about for the Westwood Cardinals? Well, Wayne Hills certainly will have the upper hand on the turf because they've practiced and played on it. And they know all the bounces, and they know the rolls. So, and they know the speed of the ball, so I think they'll certainly have the upper hand. Yeah, as you said, Wayne Hills has played on this for a few years, and they know the rolls and bounces. It doesn't really bounce crazy on here as it would on grass. It's a nice straight bounce on this turf, and it just rolls pretty fast, but they're used to that. Alex, who are your key players and your score prediction for this game? Well, my key player for the game is goalie Gabby Ewing. Uh, defense is certainly the most important part because no matter how much you score, you cannot lose the game if you don't if you don't allow a goal. Definitely, defense is a very important part. I'm going to go on the other hand of the spectrum, though. I'm going to go with offensive number 30, Kate Frieswick. Last year, I saw the uh, the league championship game, I believe it was, and she scored the game-winning goal in overtime, so I think she's definitely going to carry that momentum into this year. My score prediction, though, is going to be 5-1. to one. I heard from Wayne Hills field hockey players that this Westwood team isn't very good, so I think they're going to do a pretty big blowout for them. What's your score prediction, Alex? Uh, my score prediction is about 4 nothing. I think, like you said, Westwood's not that good of a team. And at 6-0, and Wayne Hills has shown that they're a very good team. All right, so that'll do it for our pregame, and we'll see you guys in the booth after this. She gets it to Giametta. Giametta corrals it, puts a shot on net. Deflected into the net. A goal by Brittany Galone, and Wayne Hills wins the North 1 Group 3 State Championship. Oh, baby, call your friends. Call your friends. Scripted any better, Joe. Couldn't script it any better myself. What a shot by Brittany Galone off the deflection from Jacqueline Giametta and Wayne Hills wins the North One Group 3 State Championship in dramatic fashion. Hello and welcome back to Patriots Stadium. We're here for the start of this game. The Westwood team was actually a little bit late to this game, so we're getting about a 45 minute late start. The star dish for today look to be Mel Ryan at left wing, Rachel Fixlin at left inner, Nicole Modak at center forward, Angelica Giametta at right inner, Alyssa Appel at right wing, Kate Frieswick at left mid, Emily Spazanti at center mid, Hannah Lucas at right mid, Tiffany Coppola at center halfback, Emily Miller at sweeper, and Gabby Ewing in the goal. So Alex, I know you talked about Gabby Ewing before being a, uh, a big goal receiver. She has a lot of goals. She didn't start last year because of Steph Zygman. She was really good. She's actually playing field hockey at Vermont. So she's got some big shoes to fill. How do you think she's going to fill them in this game? I mean, we're six games into the season, but she's got to continue to prove herself. Uh, I don't think this game should be that big of a test for her. No offense to Westwood, but they are not the best team, as Merrill Ryan did say earlier. So... I think this is a good, not to say a practice game, but this should be a relatively easy game for her. You see, I'm Mrs. Spazanti taking into Westwood territory. Field hockey really is not a slow-paced game, but you get a lot of whistles called and a lot of a lot of goal-scoring opportunities, a lot of free whistles. To see Wayne Hill is in goal-scoring territory. See, as I mentioned before, the whistles, a lot of them are getting called. I was talking to center mid Emily Spazanti earlier, and she told me that there's a new rule that almost revolutionized the game because 
there are so many penalties in this game that instead of having to wait for like when there's a penalty, instead of for having to wait for when the all the players are at least seven feet away, as soon as they are, you, you can just take it, and it, it just makes the game so much faster. It definitely that rule was a good rule added. Looks like they're gonna have out of bounds on Wayne Hill, so Westwood's gonna be taking this one up, get the scoring opportunity away. We actually don't have any Westwood rosters, so we're just gonna be calling numbers for them. But Wayne Hills, it seems like it's made up of a lot of seniors. They had a lot of seniors starting last year, but they left, so a lot of the seniors took their places. And we have a few juniors on the roster. Not, not many sophomores are starting for this team. Though we have, I believe, two or three sophomores on the roster. We have Elizabeth Yori, and I think that's about it. Ali, Ali Schoolar. I don't know who that is, so she might be a sophomore. She might not. But yeah, last year we had. Alex Kohler is actually a senior. But yeah, we had last year, I know that there was actually a sophomore who got a lot of playing time, Angelica Giametta. She's coming back this year, and she's going to be playing. Her two sisters actually did play for Wayne Hills Field Hockey, Kim Giametta and Jackie Giametta. Pretty sure they were pretty big stars here. See Hannah Lucas taking it in now. But yeah, we're going to see who can get the first goal in this game. Westwood making a push to Wayne Hills territory, but it goes right through number 29's legs. Alex, did you get a chance to see the uh, the Wayne Hills Wayne Valley football game on Friday night? I believe it was. Unfortunately, I did not. I was sick that night, but I did see some of the highlights on MSG Varsity, and I know we did win 21 to 16. And not to say it was our best game, but it, it was a good show, and a win is a win. Yeah, definitely. 20 to 16 is a little odd of a score. Wayne Valley, actually, it was 21 to 10, and then they scored a touchdown, and Euphoria leading that with a run. So they wanted to go for two, because if you're at 17, you're still down a touchdown. But if you're at 18, you're only down one field goal. So they wanted to try to cut that lead down to three. They couldn't do it, so then they ended up being down five. And the story pretty much speaks for itself. Fourth and fourth down, Wayne Hills gets the turnover. And then they pretty much pick up the win and go 3-0 and against Valley in the last 10 years. And this Friday we play Teaneck, which played Bergen Catholic last Friday and lost 52-12. to Bergen Catholic is one of the best teams in New Jersey. And Wayne Hills is one of the best public schools in New Jersey. We're not quite as good as Bergen Catholic, but Teaneck should certainly not be as hard as Wayne Valley. Yeah, definitely. The thing about crosstown rivalry games are it's a lot of you bring a lot of fans to the stand. As you can see in this game, there's really I know the Westwood stands I think has one fan, maybe two fans. I don't want to say we have less than twenty for Wayne Hills Field hockey. So you see these games don't really bring out a lot of people. But Football games definitely get a big crowd. I know a lot of the games do, too. A lot of other sports. Baseball usually brings out a pretty good turnout. Basketball is very good. Field hockey just hasn't seemed to uh, to made its mark in Wayne Hills history. Last year, though, they did win. I believe they were state champions and league champions. So that was a good thing for them. And the year before that, I think they were also one of the champions. I believe it was state champions. So Wayne Hills field hockey is starting to make their mark on the back of Coach Padami. Angelica Giamet holds it on the outside. So we got a whistle. I think that's going to be a foot. All right, no, it's a corner. First game I announced field hockey, Alex, I noticed that they put on those masks. Me and my friend Doug Schweibel were announcing it, so we made sort of a joke that it was a sort of a Rip Hamilton thing, but we didn't know that it was mandatory to wear those masks. So what do you think about that? you think it's a good idea to wear these masks? As shot from the outside, saved by the goaltender. Looks like Westwood's able to push that one out. Seems so. Fix them with the shot on net. Saved. There's a lot of commotion going around on the goal. Emily Suzanti backhands it. And we got a whistle on another corner coming up. So, yeah, Alex, what do you think about those masks? Not that I have ever felt uh, one of the field hockey balls, but based on the uh, sound from the clashing of the sticks to the balls themselves, I, I personally 
I personally think that it is a good idea. Safety, of course, is very important. And in some of the highlights I have seen, certain players like Junior Sean O'Burchill ha can really, really hit the ball very hard, and I really think it is uh, quite... I, I really think it is a better idea to wear a mask. Yeah, last year I was able to have a... Uh, I don't know what you would call it, a pass, a catch, whatever, with, uh, with Sean O'Burchill right before the state championship game. And you might not think that people hit it hard, but she was fireballing that at me. I mean, I was afraid of it. I stopped after a couple of throws. Looks like we're going to have a foot. It's going to be Westwood Ball. We're only about seven minutes into this game, eight minutes, but it seems like a one-sided show. No shots on net for Westwood. I think about three or four shots for Wayne Hills, so... Our predictions are seeming to come true. As you see, Nicole Modak taking this one up. She's got Kate Frieswick down by the goal. Passes it in. Seems like she just didn't have enough mustard on that one. But then Rachel Fixlin to the center. Shot on the outside by, it looks like, Kate Frieswick. Westwood looks like they're going to get this one out of there, though. In fact, Nick, Westwood has only had the ball on Wayne Hill's side of the field twice. Make that three times. But one time went out of bounds, and the other time it was quickly back to the westward side of the ball, side of the field. Yeah, so you see Wayne Hill's offense is pretty much dominating this game, and then right there you saw Westwood brought it over to them, and their defense just ate it all up and put it back this other way. You see Giametta and Fixlin taking it up the right side, but it goes just out of bounds. Hannah Lucas with a nice steal. She's bringing it up. She got Fixlin to the right, Modak to the left, and down by the goal. Alex Albano is down by the goal. Starter was not named, but Alex Albano started in this game. Lucas attempt to the backhand, but it looks like it's going to be Westwood ball. Freeze hook at the shot. Going to go just outside of the goal. Kate Friesewick's going to be taking the corners for Wayne Hills. This one's Shauna Birchall. Told you before about that hard shot. She shoots it just wide of the net. Looks like we're going to have Westwood ball. Westwood's going to be taking this one. Tried to get that one up to midfield, but quickly taken away by, it looks like, number 10, Emily Spazanti. Angelica Giametta with the pass just wide of Rachel Fixon's stick, so that one's going to go out of bounds. Pass in the circle to Nicole Modak. This one's going to be Westwood's ball. So through 10 minutes in this game, we're still at a 0-0 score. Wayne Hill 0. Westwood Cardinals have 0. Seems to have been a slow-moving game from all of my field hockey experience. Really, just a lot of passing from the outside, dribbling from the 40 to the other 30, back and forth. So really not, not the most exciting game in the first 10 minutes. See, Westwood starting to make a push, but then Shauna Birchall comes in and takes that one right away. Shauna Birchall, another unnamed starters. She is number 21 for you folks watching on TV.
Westwood making a push at this one. They got two defenders by the goal, or two offenders by the goal, excuse me. Third one making their way up. Just like that, taking away Dwayne Hill's ball. They got to about the 30-yard line of Wayne Hills, and that was the farthest in 12 minutes that they've gotten all game. Uh, shot by Rachel Fixlin on net, saved by the goalie. Nice save there by the Westwood goalie. We're going to give her props for that one. Mel Ryan making an entrance into the game. And I think we're looking at a corner for Wayne Hills. Let's see if they can make a goal out of this one. Kay Frieswick taking the corner. She's got everyone up there. Now he's fancy with a shot. Just wide right. Bounce a little too much for Mel Ryan's stick to handle. Westwood's going to be taking this one out. Nicely stolen by Kate Frieswick. She tries to pass it up to Modak, but quickly intercepted by Westwood. Nicole Modak with some fancy footwork, or stick work, excuse me, up into the front, but Wayne Hills looks like they're going to get this ball back. Some players not, not yet in the game yet. We've got Ali Nurik, number two. I believe Delaney Burns, as Wayne Hills got this one by the goal. Westwood ball though. Delaney Burns, Caroline O'Keefe, number 14. Megan Byrne, number 12. Elizabeth Yori, number 29. Ali Carluccio, number 20. And Shira Baldi, the backup goalkeeper, number double zeros. We're going to see Shira a lot next year. She's she's a migrate. She's a junior. So And Gabby Ewing's graduating. So we're going to see her get the starts next year. So one big thing about being in high school is waiting for your position to open up. I mean, if you got a senior there, most likely you're not going to start unless you're a lot better than them. Westwood taking this one up, but it seemed to be that number 15 for Westwood. Didn't seem like she was passing that much. Might have an injury on the field, but fix him with the shot on net. Saved by the goalkeeper. Two saves. Three saves. And that's a foot. Giving that one to Wayne Hills. It looks like we have an injury. Number 23 for Westwood. Alex, you see anything that happened on that injury? I'm not 100% sure, Nick, but I do believe that the ball ricocheted off, I believe, the knee or any other part of the leg of number 23. Yeah, so we'll let the trainers clean her up. We'll, we're going to take a break right now, so we'll be back in a moment. All this hype about the defense, and, the, and it's been true in this game, playing very nice defense. Oh, Wayne Hills Patriots! Ariel Danziger off the deflection of Alyssa Baselli. And just like we were talking about before, how important momentum is in this game. The Wayne Hills Patriots get the first goal in this huge county final, and the Wayne Hills Patriots are on top one to nothing. His Patriots putting a lot of defenders in the box. Ryan looking for help, and that is it. That is their final. The Wayne Hills Patriots have just defeated the Wayne Valley Indians in the Baselli County final. Girls soccer, Wayne Hills won, Wayne Valley nothing. They are your 2005 Passaic County champions. And we're back at Patriots Stadium. Halfway through the first half, we've got a 0-0 game. The Westwood Cardinals versus the Wayne Hills Patriots. Before we took a break, we had an injury for Westwood, number 23. She was carried off the field. She got some claps from the audience, so we're going to hope she's okay. Nicole Modak takes this one up. We see Fixon with the shot on net. Stick save and a beauty by the goalkeeper. Wayne Hill still got some chances, though. Mel Ryan trying to fight for that puck inside. Hannah Lucas with a nice save. And looks like some commotion in front of the goal. Rachel Fixon trying to get a shot off. So is Nicole Modak, and we see Kate Frieswick with a shot wide left. 
So there goes Wayne Hill's score chance for that one. Alex, anything about that play you saw special? I like how Wayne Hill's, well, even though they have not been able to put the ball in the net, have gotten really a lot of pressure on the Westwood goal. The Westwood goalie is really doing fantastically. She's made numerous saves, and I also like how even when the ball was cleared, uh, players like Hannah Lucas still went for it and ended up stealing the ball and getting it back into the Westwood circle. So Wayne Hills with another corner opportunity. For those of you who aren't big field hockey fans, corner, you got, I believe it goes sort of like a corner kick, how it goes out. But you got Westwood players flying out of the goal, and Wayne Hills has every player up there. As you see, shot on net. Up, oh, another shot on net, wide right. Shot on net by Merrill Ryan goes wide right. And once again, just a great save by the Westwood goalie. She's really dominating the circle. And while the defense is relatively porous, that goalie is really keeping them in the game. SAT word? Porous? <laughs> it's, uh, le it's letting a lot of opportunities slip through. Hopefully that's on my SAT now. <laughs> Birchall with a shot from the outside. Wide right again. Looks like we're going to have another corner. Actually, no. This one's going to be Westwood Ball. They're going to be taking it up. Gia Meta taking this one up, tries to center it, but Westwood defenders not having any of that. Now we see Hannah Lucas try to do the same thing. She's dribbling inside and outside of defenders. Gets it to the right side, shot. Yes. We're looking at a goal. Goal for the Wayne Hills field hockey team. Goal looks like it was scored by number 18, Rachel Fixlin. The junior, number 18, Rachel Fixlin with the goal. Alex, what do you think about that? Great aggressive play by Hannah Lucas, bringing the ball up, digging out some defenders. It was just a fantastic play. Nice center pass. The goalie just couldn't shift from the side of the goal in time, and Rachel Fixlin put it in the back of the net. Yeah, one thing that people really, someone that won't get credit for that play is Hannah Lucas, but she really made that play all happen. She was, Giametta first, she was loosening up the defenders for Lucas, and Lucas just dribbled in and out. She centered it. I believe it was off of one more Wayne Hills player that was hanging out around the left side of the net. And then just pass it right in, and Rachel Fixlin puts it in for the goal. Great play by Wayne Hills. Taking this one up again. Fixlin trying to dribble in and out. Giametta comes and takes this one up. She's going to be the leader of the charge. Actually, not the leader of the charge because all her players were in front of her. But she was taking the ball. Hannah Lucas, the playmaker from last time, tries to make it happen again. Spazanti looking for a shot. Westwood defender takes it away from her nicely. Lucas following her nicely. We're looking like it's Wayne Hill's ball. I believe the call was a foot or possibly obstruction. Toronto Birchall with that big stick swings it into the 20. <laughs> And Lucas centers it. Modak with the shot. Takes a little bit of a whiff on it, but we're going to have Westwood ball. Scoring opportunity for Hills, and they couldn't, couldn't capitalize on it. Spazanti ripping through defenders. She looks for the center. Oh, just missed it. Modak has the ball. Westwood looks like they're going to get this one away. Giametta chasing down the Westwood defender right up to midfield. Great play by, don't have the number on her, but we'll look at a minute. Number 16, and that is Emily Miller. She's playing sweeper today for Wayne Hills. Another push for Westwood. Hannah Lucas in a foot race with number 20 for Westwood. Tiffany Coppola right there next to her. You see an attempt at center. And it looks like her, her hair tie is falling out. We're going to see how that affects her.
think she's going to find it right now. There, she's got it. Tiffany Capullo's got it right on her stick, ready for her. Giametta passes it up to Modak. Modak fancy moves around defender. She's got Ryan open towards the net. Centered. And we're looking at a goal. Goal for Wayne Hill. Second of the day by number 26, Alex Albano. Great play right there. It seems like there's some miscommunication between the defender and the goalie. Well, it was really Angelica Giametta had just a great transition. And then... On the center, Nicole Modak just made a great move to get past the defender, passed it to the center, and sure enough, the goalie deflected it off, went right to Alex Albano, and she scored. So, our two key players, I'm sure they're making an impact, but not on the scoreboard. Got Gabby Ewing, I believe, zero saves on the day, and Kate Frieswick might have a shot on goal. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, they don't need to do it if their teammates are doing it. And with score predictions right here, Alex is sitting pretty right now with four to nothing, and five one is it's a little bit in the distance for me. But it's still only twenty minutes into the game. Yeah, sorry, Nick, but uh, with the way the Wayne Hills offense and defense is playing, uh, coupled with the fact that Gabby Ewing has not had to leave the five foot radius that is her box, I really don't see Westwood scoring a goal. I honestly don't see Westwood getting past Wayne Hill's 15-yard line. So I think you might have it on the shutout. Westwood making some noise, bringing it up. It's going to be their ball. Shauna Birchill right there defending it. Defending it like it's her little cub. As if Shauna was a mother, a mother tiger and that ball was her cub. She was not letting it get by. Westwood now starting to make some noise. Wayne Hills quiets, quiets them quickly, though. Really, in field hockey, you can see when one team is overpowering another. I mean, seeing that Westwood hat doesn't even have a shot on net, you know how well Wayne Hills' offense is doing. And in a game like, I don't know, football, the scoreboard's going to show it, but you're going to get some scoring opportunities. But, yeah, field hockey, you can really tell when one team is dominating the other. I think that you could say that for any sport, but especially field hockey, where while the score is only 2 nothing, Wayne Hills has really dominated the pace and the control of this game. Posted for Wayne Hills. Shot on net, posted, and we're looking at that one wide right. Two to nothing, looking at about 23 minutes into this game, or 22, excuse me. Got 7.50 left on the clock for this first half in field hockey. We only played two halves, so you're looking at possibly the score for the rest of this game. West was going to be taking this one. Misses the ball. That's a little embarrassing. That's a foot. That's going away in hills. If you guys hear any screaming near the field, that those are my cousins. They're a little crazy sometimes. Got three little cousins, all under the age of seven. And they seem to be throwing fits right now. Westwood taking this one up. Well, of course there's a wrong fits right now, Nick. I mean, your cousin Alex Albano just scored a goal, so I mean, I'd imagine they'd be pretty ecstatic. Yeah, those don't sound like excited screams. They sound more like, like crying screams, but whatever you want it to be. Number 12 racing for that ball outside. It's not there. Giametta right to Hannah Lucas. Hannah Lucas going to take this one up to Modak. Modak's got Ryan open. She's got to get rid of it quick. We're looking at a foot. So Modak again. Passes it right to the middle. Spazanti with the shot on net. Nice save by the Westwood goalie. 
some commotion down at the net, and West was going to get this one back. Nice save by the goalie there. Modak making a rush at the ball, trying to make sure that one doesn't get past the 30. Lucas again rushing at it. And Spazanti is right there. So this one looks like it's going to be Westwood ball. Possibly their first offensive push in about five minutes. Number five for Westwood is going to be taking this one in. Cross to the middle. Chance for Westwood right here. Number 26. Deeks one. Friesuk right there to take it away though. Deeks two. Deeks three. This one's going to be Wayne Hill's ball, I believe. No, it's Westwood ball. Westwood with their first real scoring opportunity inside the 20. But Wayne Hills takes that one away. For the first time this game, they got inside the Wayne Hills 15. And nothing came of it. Looks like we got them right here, the 10 yard line. This could be a scoring opportunity. Geometic quickly there. She's deking inside and out, running down the right side of the sideline. Geometic just couldn't keep that one in. Now, in the games I've seen, you have a lot of the underclassmen playing uh, ball boy or what do you call it, ball girl. But really don't see that in this game. So a lot of extra running is going to be for the Wayne Hills and the Westwood teams. Albano in there taking it away. She's at a fight with them. Fight with number 16, and she wins it. Ryan right up there. Looks like it's going to be a goal opportunity. Modak with the shot wide left. So Wayne Hills look to extend their lead three to nothing there. But Modak just couldn't put it in. Friesuk taking this one up the left side. She'll look. She'll try to center it. Off the goalie. Shin guards. Another shot. Saved. This one could be trouble. But it's going to be Westwood. Or, yes, Westwood ball. So scoring oppor opportunity is over. And once again, just fantastic playing by the Westwood goalie. The amount of opportunities Wayne Hills has had to the uh, amount of goals they scored is really incredible. Two goals on what has to be at least 30 shots really says something about the uh, Westwood goalie. That one looked like it went just a little too high. Yeah, but the Westwood goalie seems like she's the only player that wants to play right now. You see this Westwood team is kind of looking a little bit sluggish. I would too if I was losing 2 to nothing end of the first half, but that's just me. I wouldn't call it they're playing sluggish. They're certainly still playing pretty hard. It's just Wayne Hills is just clearly the better team and absolutely overpowering them. Yeah, definitely. They've I don't even believe they had one shot on net. So slow day back there for Gabby Ewing. Fast day up here for the Westwood goalie. Needless to say, my uh, key player of the game wasn't quite exactly uh, you know, the right choice, but considering Gabby Ewing has zero saves. But, um, you know, I, I mean, she's still factoring in emotionally, certainly. She's a senior, ca uh, senior leader of this team. So even though she's not getting any action, she certainly is contributing to the game. Yeah, no one knows how many shots if you look at that scoreboard. So right now, she's got a shutout. out. 
Westwood trying to make a push, but Emily Spazanti is there to quickly stop it. To Friesvik. Friesvik trying to center it. Modak with the ball. Modak with that, and we got a goal. Goal might have hit off a few people. We're either giving that goal to numbers. Looks like Nicole Modak's getting that goal. Yeah. Nicole Modak with the goal, number 13. Yep, Nicole's got that goal. See, a cool thing that field hockey does is whoever scores that goal, or at least it seemed like this game, they go into the net and they bring it back out to uh, to the midfield line. So it's kind of easy for us to see who scores the goal. And I don't know, it's kind of like a walk of victory for the goal scorer. Friesewick trying to center it. They're trying to make something happen quick again. Giametto with it. And now Mero Ryan's in a fight, but Westwood looks to get that one out. Something I like, I definitely like the uh, the whole you take it back if you score a goal. It's certainly, it's sort of like soccer where the players celebrate when they score a goal, but it's a lot less showy. Yeah, and I know if you've ever seen uh, NFL football, Chad Johnson, or now known as Chad Ochocinco, definitely takes his celebrating to the extremes. Him and Terrell Owens, both on the same team, so... We're expecting to see a lot of big celebrations this year from them, too. One more member of our broadcasting team that we haven't mentioned. We have Josh Mordkoff at camera today. It's Josh's first time out on the job. We think he's doing a fantastic job. But the tape's going to show, so let's wish the best of luck to Josh. Friesewick corrals it out into the middle. Shot on net, wide left. Swazanti with the shot wide left. And that takes us to halftime. Win Hills with a 3 nothing lead. Oh, yeah, the um, son I forgot to mention, the clock stops on the scoreboard at two minutes, so you really got to pay attention. So with this halftime, we're going to shoot this to break, and we'll be back with the second half action after this. Low snap, it's one off. Fournier escaped the pressure, flushed down the pocket. Looks deep down the field, intercepted by Wayne Hill. I'm going to the 40 yard mark. Wayne Hills will take over in Valley territory with five minutes to go. What a block! Wow, that was incredible! That was incredible! It looked like it was Joe Lee. 64 on the button, we're gonna see it here. Troy comes to the side of the Oh my! Oh, that is incredible! That is a oh. luck for the that, Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Oh my I god! Know, I don't know how to describe it. But well, like we said, a turnover would be big. What the fuck? Oh my god. What a hit. The hit. Boom! It was Joe Lane. Joe Lane on the hit. Oh, wow. The, the hot oh, team makes it happen. Hands up up the middle, there's a hole! Into the secondary! Pen! Five touchdown, Wayne Hill piling it on, and it's down twenty to ten. Second half of action from Patriot Stadium. We have the Wayne Hills Patriots leading the Westwood Cardinals three to nothing. So far, we have goals in this game scored by Nicole Modak got one, Alex Albano with one, and I believe Rachel Fixon with one. Gabby Ewing, no saves on the night. She, the offense has been keeping the Westwood goalie busy. So, Alex, what's your thoughts on the first half of this this game? Well, my key player of the game, Gabby Ewing, has not gotten any action, which certainly tells a lot about how well this Wayne Hills team is playing. They've kept the ball primarily on the Westwood side of the field and mostly in the Westwood circle. The Westwood goalie has been playing fantastically, letting up only three goals and, and on many, many shots. And uh, I look for that to continue in the second half. New players I see coming in. We have Delaney Burns making her way in, number eight. And... That's about all I can see for now, but looks like the new player making her way in, Delaney Burns, number eight. She'll be playing, uh, I don't know, left wing? Yeah, it's not written down my paper, but we have, sorry, what's your name? Dave. We have Dave keeping score for us tonight. He just told us it was left wing. So Wayne Hill is going back to their fast-paced action. They're trying to just keep adding on to this scorecard. Be 
Friesewick with the shot on net. She's fighting with the defender over there. We're looking at a corner right here, so chance for Wayne Hills to get back into this one. Friesewick, as she always was, taking the corners. So we're going to look for a goal on this one to put Wayne Hills up 4 to nothing. As I mentioned, my prediction for this game, 4 to nothing. <laughs> um, I don't think so, Nick. I'm pretty sure mine was 4 nothing. Where's was 5-1? Give or take. So, it looks like we're going to stay at 3 nothing for that offensive drive. At least Westwood trying to make something happen fast. They're motoring down that field. Hannah Lucas takes it right away, though. Nicole Modak trying to center it. Westwood defender all over that, though. Looks like it's going to be Westwood ball. Corner. Another corner. Friesewick taking it. So, let's see if Wayne Hills can make this one 4 to nothing. A little bit of a fumble on that corner. Looking at it. Looks Suzanti. Pass to the outside to Birchall. Birchall with the big heave. Wide left. Good try there by Shauna Birchall. <laughs> Making a big shot from the outside, trying to make something happen. I have a philosophy for, for hockey, or maybe even just when I play NHL 2010, it's a video game, so that you got to keep putting shots on net, and they're going to eventually go in, and it seems like that's what Wayne Hills is trying to do right now. Westwood, on the other hand, no shots on goal, so they're not doing that. Rachel Fixon will take this one up the right sideline. Pass it into Spazanti. Spazanti's got it. Top of the key. Backhand in. Post. Goal. Goal for the Wayne Hills Patriots. I think we're looking at Rachel Fixon's second one on the day. Goal for Wayne Hills. They're up 4 to nothing. Rachel Fixon's one away from the hat trick. What would you think about that, Alex? That was a give and go. It looked Fixlin crossed into the center. And ran straight into the goal box and ended up scoring. Beautiful. Definitely. I don't know if that was, if that's just by, I don't know how to say it, but like they just knew to do that or if it's a play. But yeah, it definitely looked like they knew what they were doing on that one. Fixon just gave it right in, just cut right to the net. More of a, more of a basketball play than you would think field hockey, but hey, whatever works. Spazanti dribbling in and out of defenders. She'll heave that one up. Looks like a hit number 16 for Westwood in the hand, but she's tough. She'll stay in there. Westwood taking this one up. Number 20. She's going to dribble in. Birchall in number 20 with a foot race to the ball. That's going to be Wayne Hill's ball. So Westwood's offensive attempts are shattered. As you see them get that ball back. But Modak making her way up. Oh, and she looks like she was tripped. No whistle on that one. Fans a little bit angry. But sometimes that's just what happens. Now again, Alex talks about this in the pregame. You trip on grass, that's probably going to hurt a lot more than it did on turf. Turf, it's like almost you just bounce right off of it. See, that part's certainly true, but... I mean, there's still the aspect where if you slot in the turf, it, you get turf burn, and that certainly hurts. Or as you slot in the grass, you just really get a grass stain. Yeah, definitely turf burn. I've seen the football players with it pretty bad. Looks like Delaney Burns with the shot on net. Kick save and a butte for the goalie for Westwood. She seems to be Westwood's only line of defense tonight. Friesewick centering it. Sorry, that wasn't Friesewick centering it. That was... We'll get the number on that in a minute, but we're going to have a corner for Wayne Hills. Looks like Merrill Ryan centered that one, number six. Burchell with the big heave from the outside. Look at another corner here. Friesewick will take this one again. Let's see if they'll do the same scheme right to Birchall, and Birchall's going to try to hit it in from the outside. 
Looks like they, they do. Virgil, big shot. Hits off a few sticks and back out. Virgil with it again. Dribbles past one backhand. Saves it is Delaney Burns, but a nice kick save by the Westwood goalie. Getting that one out of the crease. Modak with the shot. Kick save again. This Westwood goalie seems like to be a brick wall. Other than the fact that she's got four goals on her, she's doing a pretty good job. Certainly every time it seems Wayne Hills has a corner, it goes to Shauna Burchill. And I mean, if you're going to use one word to describe Shauna Burchill's shot, I guess it would just be scary. Because it is just lightning fast. Yeah, I said it before. I'll say it again. I had a, uh, a catch with her with field hockey. And I, I got it out of there pretty quick. Didn't want to get any shin bruises or anything like that. She fires that ball when she hits it. Giametta dribbling in and out. She gets it past one. Looks like that's going to be Wayne Hill's ball. Suzanti will take this one. She dribbles in. Pass it to Giametta. Giametta with the turnaround shot. That's going to be Westwood. So we are about six minutes into this second half. Wayne Hill is with one goal. Westwood with still no shots on net. So our score is at four to nothing. Some confusion on the field, but Westwood's going to be taking that one. Giamatta dribbling in and out. She couldn't get it done, though. Westwood will take that one away. Tiffany Coppola right out there to take that away. And Wayne Hills is going to get the possession as a fact. Big pass up the sideline to Merrill Ryan. Merrill Ryan looks for the shot. Saved by the Westwood goalie. Another save. Third save. Coming in there. Angelica Giametta trying to get a shot on net. But this Westwood goalie, she seems to be unstoppable tonight in those one-on-one -on -one situations. Another kick save. It seems like when you get either another one of her her defenders in there, that's when she really starts to uh, to mess up, I guess you could say. But doing a great job thus far with those one-on-one -on -one situations. Modak with the shot. Another kick save. We're looking at that one. Westwood ball, so single-handedly the Westwood goalie stopping that push from Wayne Hills. <clears throat> Hannah Lucas stops that one. There's Emily Spazanti. Stop it again, but we're looking at Westwood ball. Change of possession just like that, and Wayne Hills is taking it up. Giametta looks like she'll take this one. Dribbles it right off the dot. And Modak with it. Pass to Ryan. Ryan with the center to Modak. Friesewick getting in there. And we're looking at a corner here for Wayne Hills. Unsuccessful on the night with corners, but we'll see if they can put this last one in as we are about nine minutes into the second half. Friesewick will take it, and we'll see if they'll go with that same formation. Right to Birchall. Birchall with the outside shot. Spazanti to Lucas. Lucas with the shot. Now Giametta's got it. And we've got a goal by Wayne Hills. Goal scored by number 13, Nicole Modak. Here second on the night. As Wayne Hills takes this lead, five to nothing. After, after five or so corners, you had to think that there was going to be a time where Wayne Hills certainly was going to put one of them in, and Nicole Modak finally finished it off. I was a little questionable about that goal. You didn't really see a big reaction from the Wayne Hills crowd as they have earlier in the game, so that's why I was a little skeptical to see if it went in or not. But seeing Nicole Modak go in that goal and pick it out definitely changed my beliefs about it. I didn't actually see the ball go in the net, nor did I see uh, Nicole Modak anywhere in the goal uh, box. But, you know, she scored. 
Delaney Burns in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the Westwood goalie. Again, we said that Westwood goalie has been unstoppable tonight in those situations. And again, she stops Wayne Hill's offense. Another corner for Wayne Hills. Friesberg will take this one out again. We'll see if they'll go with that same formation. Spazanti to Lucas to Modak. And it's Spazanti. To Friesberg. Friesberg trying to put it in there, but Westwood defender all over it. So, looks like Wayne Hills is going to get another corner. Friesberg taking this one as she has been all day. Frieswick to Burchill. Burchill with the heave ho. Trying to make an outside shot. Didn't go in, but we got a goal scored. Number nine, Angelica Giametta getting on the board. And we're looking at 6 0 Wayne Hills. Like I said, after a lot of corners, one was bound, one was bound to go in. And two in a row now have gone in. Just fantastic play on the corners. They've adjusted, made, and the adjustments have clearly worked as they scored two straight goals off corners now. Wayne Hill's still with most of their starters, and I'm surprised they're not making a switch to the underclassmen, or at least the juniors or the the seniors that don't play to play, but they still have most of their starters in, in this 6 nothing blowout. Now, this game is going to be near impossible for Westwood to make up, so we'll see what happens, but I don't think they're going to make it up. thing I see is Wayne Hills is still playing their heart out. You see Giametta is still fighting for every ball. She keeps that one in. But there's no slowing down for them because they know Coach Badami will get on them if they slow down. And I'm shocked to see that the only non-starter playing looks to be Delaney Burns. As, never mind, it looks like Caroline O'Keefe is making her way into the game. She's a senior for this Wayne Hills field hockey team. So we're going to look to get her a nice goal put on the roster. Karen O'Keefe making the switch with Merrill Ryan on that one. So Caroline looks to be playing offense right now. I'm sure you can't hear it, but the Westwood coaches are still cheering for their Westwood team, and I I see no reason why they are. They're down 6 nothing, But... Whatever floats your boat. Well, Nick, I mean, if the coach doesn't cheer, then why would the players even, like, have any spirit to go out and continue playing? Yes, you're down 6 nothing, and yes, there's practically a 0% chance you can come back from that. But, uh, you know, uh, at least their spirits are high. They know they, they probably knew coming in that Wayne Hills is a great team and that they were going to lose. But, you know, at least they're still in it. They're playing their hearts out. And, you know, as long as they have fun, it's really all that matters. I could agree with that to to a certain extent. You know, yeah, the coach has to cheer for you, but we're at the high school level. This isn't Little League Baseball anymore where, it, where it's all about fun. A lot of it's about winning at this point in high school. So, I mean, these coaches are down 6 nothing. They're not going to win, so I don't understand why they're, why they're cheering, why they're yelling. Uh, wins and losses are just numbers. As long as the team plays their hardest, as long as every single player plays their hardest, plays their hearts out, I really think that the coaches will be happy. And, um, you know, maybe, and I'm sure it'll pay off, but just not against this Hills team today. I see one Westwood player playing her heart out, and that is the big goalie. Now, even though the score may not say so about this goalie down 6 nothing, really it's on those one-on-one -on -one situations where Wayne Hills is supposed to score, the goalie has been 
virtually unstoppable in those. I don't think she's let up a single goal in that. Seems like we have another Wayne Hills player coming in off the bench. Number 11, Ali Scular. Nice to see Coach Badamity getting some other players some playing time. Just wide from Spazanti to Birchall. As Westwood will look to take this one up as we're reaching the halfway point in our second half. That's going to be Westwood ball as we've reached the half point in this second quarter, or second half, you could call it. Field hockey only plays two halves, 30 minutes each. As you see, Meryl Ryan taking this one up the right sideline. She's not stopping. She's going to look for O'Keefe right to in the middle. That one goes just out of bounds. And we're looking at Westwood ball. Again, Ryan tries to ride that right sideline. But Westwood's able to defend it nicely. And as a result, they get the ball. Sorry about that. Had a important phone call to take. But no phone call should take the place of field hockey in my heart. This Wayne Hills team really showing themselves in this one. Six to nothing. If all if all points west, they'll be making their record seven and zero after this one. And looking at another state championship. Coach Bidamley Coach Bidamley is certainly a great coach. She's led the Wayne Hills team to a few state championships or and league championships over the past few years. And after this game, Wayne Hills will be 7-0, and assuming that they can pull off the victory, which at 6 nothing seems pretty likely. And it's just a really a great crop of talent that Badami seems to have every year. And this year included uh, the team 6-0, and look, on the verge of 7-0. and And they're not slowing down. They're really just a fantastic team. And uh, hopefully we'll see Badami and the team in the uh, state and league championships. Yeah, the one thing people don't realize of why our football practice, football team is always so good, I mean, sure, they practice their uh, their butts off, but they really have a lot of depth that the what, the guy starting isn't that much better than the guy behind him, so you always have to be fighting for your position. I know this Wayne Hills field hockey team, they had a lot of stars last year that played JV that aren't even starting on this team. So you could see the depth that they have making those JV players varsity players. I'm sure they are, but they just couldn't win their position this year. So the depth of this field hockey team really shows how well they're going to do in the state championships. Big hit by Emily Spazanti trying to get it up. Westwood team starting to get into it. But quickly taken away, Meryl Ryan hugging that right sideline that she's loved so much this game. Tries to center it. No one there, but Caroline O'Keefe making a run in that ball. She wants to play. That's going to be Westwood ball. Westwood taking this one up. Friesewick taking it away. She's going to hit it up. Delaney Burns. Deeks one. 
She deeks too. She's got O'Keefe open. She better pass it. Held on to that ball a little bit too much. But Giamet is right there to take it away. She's got Meryl Ryan right on the right sideline. Ryan takes it up. Ryan centers it. O'Keefe right there, but we're going to have Westwood ball. I believe we're looking at a foot call there. And that's all we're going to hear from my fellow commentator, Alex Green. Alex, any final thoughts on this game? Well, it was my first field hockey game, and I wasn't too sure coming in of how the uh, team would do. I know they were 6-0, and but I wasn't sure. I'd never seen them play. And I really thought that they were a great team, played way above my expectations, and I look forward to coming to future games. Thanks, Alex, and I'll look forward to hopefully announcing future games with you. So you're just going to be me for the last 10 minutes of this game. Delaney burns to Frieswick. Frieswick looks like she saves that one from going out. But the ref seems to think otherwise. As Westwood will take this one out. Wayne Hill's going to take this one up. Birchall to Delaney Burns. Now, Delaney Burns, that's my name, right? Yeah. Delaney Burns is a freshman on this field hockey team. I know her sister played last year. She was an all star defenseman. Can't think of her name at the moment, though. Shannon Burns, as friend Dave is helping me here in the booth, he's working the score book, or the score board, excuse me. But yeah, Shannon Burns was a big player last year on this Wayne Hill's team. I believe she. She wore the C. She was the captain defenseman. So you can really see how much of an impact, uh, or not how much of an impact, how much credit she must get for getting the starting job as a freshman. I'm sure her name didn't have to do with it. I'm sure she won it over. Whoa! Shauna Birchall, the big hit. And Frieswick just can't get to it in time. But yeah, for a freshman to be putting on that varsity uniform... I guarantee that she even got some practices with uh, Coach Badami because of her sister. And she definitely was uh, was working out with her sister in this game. Her sister, a defenseman, though, and she seems to be taking the other end of the spectrum and she's playing offense. Word in from, from fans in the stand that Shannon Burns has continued her field hockey career, as has Stephanie Zygmunt, the goalie from last year. They're both playing college field hockey, so, so good luck to them in their careers as this college field hockey season seems to be hitting about the midway point. Big hit up from Westwood right off Delaney Burns' foot. Another big hit from Westwood. Westwood might be looking at a scoring opportunity here. Number two taking up the right sideline. She's got number 11 for Hills. Allie Schoolar following her. This could be their first scoring opportunity. A little bit of a mis miscommunication could result in this game's first goal for Westwood. Gabby Ewing standing her ground, doing a great job in there. She saves it, and that'll be the end of the scoring threat for Westwood. Oh, Shauna Birchall with the miss. Seems that that hit was purely out of anger. That last one. Delaney Burns taking it up. Westwood. They've been they've been making a lot of noise in this last. These last, I say, three minutes really had it a lot in Wayne Hill's territory. And they want that first goal. They don't want to say they got shut out. I think we're going to look at Wayne Hill's ball, though. So that ends that scoring opportunity. Spazanti with a big hit up. No one there to receive it, though. Meryl Ryan was the closest person. But she had a defender right in front of her.
Mara Ryan again up the right sideline, but it looks like that one went out of bounds, and that'll be the Westwood ball. A great gift that Wayne Hills has that not not many other schools have that I know is the addition of these lights. I mean, get close to the winter, or you get close to the later of the fall season, it starts getting dark out early. This game also did start 45 minutes late, so fortunate enough to have these lights that these girls can keep playing. We have a JV game right after this. We won't be taping it, though, but you could come down and watch the JV team. Pretty sure they play right after the varsity team every home game. Shauna Birchall taking it up. She's going to look for a big hit. Gets it right by, right to Delaney Burns. Delaney Burns keeps it in. Frieswick up the left sideline. She'll take it right down to that corner. She'll get by one defender. And that'll go right out of bounds. Another new name making her way into the game. Ali Carluccio, number 20, is going to be playing defense for the rest of this game. Spazanti brings it up. She'll look for Delaney Burns on that left sideline. Delaney Burns just can't handle it, though. See Westwood players trying to show their dignity out there. You hear the players screaming, we can't quit. We can't quit. Seems like a lot of Westwood players quit about 10 minutes ago, though, so possibly a little late. Nice to see. I'm sure that those people cheering, probably the seniors on this team, so it's nice to see senior leadership taking charge. I mean, you've been on, you've been in the program for probably four years, so you gotta show, you gotta set an example for these younger players. Clock ticks down. We're down to just about three minutes and ten seconds left in this game. Wayne Hills with the lead six over Westwood. Nothing. Mel Ryan will have that on that right sideline, but it goes just out of bounds. She seems disappointed about that one. Mel Ryan centers just goes out of bounds, though. That'll be Westwood ball. Now, earlier in our school, we had a, a bomb scare. There was a bomb scare earlier in our school, and I have, it was during third period. I have third period with Merrill, so I got to talk to her a lot about this field hockey team. She actually said, uh, Westwood really is in competition. We're going to beat them six to nothing. So, pretty sure her prediction's right so far. Mine was five to one. Pretty off seeing that Westwood doesn't have a shot on goal. I have Alex Green, who had four to nothing, who is just a two goals shy of what we have right now. something going on I don't know what but nonetheless Westwood will take it out and it's quickly stolen away by number 9 Angelica Giametta as we mentioned before 2 minutes left in the game the clock stops so the refs keep the time for the rest of it and uh, when those whistle blows we'll know that it's the end of the game and unless something crazy happens Wayne Hills will be walking away with the victory That's going to be Westwood Ball, hit out by Hannah Lucas. Really a one-sided game, though. No shots on goal for... Uh, not. I'm sorry, no shots on goal. It was no shots on goal in the first half. And then 
they did make a couple nice pushes towards Gabby Ewing, the goaltender for Wayne Hills, as Shara Baldi stepped in. I don't know how long she's been in. I actually noticed her, I think, for the second half, but didn't mean to mention her. I don't know why, but yeah, no shots on goal in that first half. And then in the second half, when a lot of the, the starters coming started coming out, Westwood started to make a push, but just didn't do enough as Wayne Hills will take this victory 6 to nothing. I'm Nick Appaluccio. Alex Green helped me with this, and so did Josh Mordkoff from Patriot Stadium. We'll see you guys later.